Good morning, students. In the last class, we studied about structure of the anthem. When we are going to observe the longitudinal section of the anthem, you can find that there will be different layers which are present around, and the outermost is known as the epidermis. Then, second inner, second one is known as the endodermis, middle layers, and also typical cells. Within which there will be presence of the pollen sacs or pollen chambers. The chambers which is constitute that homogeneous tissue that is known as the sporogeneous tissue. And that the sporogeneous tissue later on it will become a pollen grains or microscopes. In this class, let us understand how there will be a formation of the pollen grains or microscope when the sporogeneous tissue it is occur. As you people in order, there will be a presence of the homogeneous tissue inside the pollen sacs or pollen chamber that is known as the uh, that will become the uh, it, it is acts as a microspore mother cell and that microspore mother cell undergoing a special type of reductional cell division then it will become pollen grains or microspores by knowing this one we can easily define the microsporogenesis as the microsporogenesis is the process of formation of microspores or it is the process of formation of the pollen grains from microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell by undergoing meiotic cell division is known as the microsporogenesis. I am repeating once again. Microsporogenesis is the process of formation of microspores or pollen grains from the microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell by undergoing the process that is known as the meiotic segregation. Then you know that. Then uh, look at the uh, concept of that microsporogenesis. Here there will be a specific type of cell division it is involved that is known as the meiotic cell division. And as you people you know that that meiosis it is a reductional cell division where that uh, quality of the cell it will go into alter or change. That is why that the quality of the microspore mother cell it is deployed. Then after the meiotic cell division, then there will be a formation of the haploid cells are formed. That is why then you can understand the process of microsporogenesis is like this. Microsporogenesis is the process of formation of the haploid pollen grains. Or it is the process of formation of the applied microspores from the deployed microspore mother cell or from the deployed pollen mother cell is known as the is considered as the microsporogenesis. Then as you are all know that, you people you know that, you people you understand in the last classes, inside the antho there will be a presence of the tissue that is known as the sporogeneous tissue and that uh, each cell present in case of this porogenous tissue it will act as a pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell. I mean to say that every cell present in case of the sporogenous tissue is acts as a pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell and this microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell it is undergoing meiosis and as a result of meiosis, you know that, that four cells are resulted. Right? That is why at the end there will be a formation of the cluster of four pollen grains are formed. That is why the pollen grains formed at the time of the microsporogenesis is considered as a pollen tetrod or microspore tetrod. As the maturation of the term anther it is continuous. As the dehydration of the anther is continuous, that the pollen tetrod they dissociate from each other, they are separated from each other, and after that, that each one it is acts as a pollen grain or microspore, and these pollen grain or microspores they will going to release from the anther by the process that is known as the dehiscence. 
Behind sentence is nothing but it is the split opening of the anthem. By the split opening or by the breaking down of the anthem, polar lines are released from the anthem and they are ready for the next process that is known as the pollination. I mean to say, after breaking down of anthem, the polar lines are released from the anthem and they are involved in the process that is known as the pollination. Then before we are understanding the concept of pollination, let us know the structure of the pollen grain. How that the pollen grain, uh, what is the structure of the pollen grain, how that the pollen grain, then what and what are the components which are present in case of the pollen grain, how that the process of uh, the pollen germination it is occur, then etc. we have to understand. Then look at that, the volume people you can see here, this is the structure of the mature pollen grain. And please you keep in mind, when we will go into understand the ploidy, that the pollen grain it is a haploid structure, pollen grain it is a haploid structure since it is a derivative of the meiotic centrifugation. And each pollen grain it is a, represents the male gamete in case of the angiosperm. And then let us know the structure of the pollen grain. Each pollen grain structurally it is more or less spherical in nature. It is circular in nature and it is measures about 25 to 50 micron meter in diameter and each pollen grain it is surrounded by means of the two membrane the outermost thick and also hard membrane that is known as the exine and the inner one it is thinner membrane that is intact. Then let us know the chemistry of exine and also intact. Chemically that exine it is made up of the component that is known as the sporopollenin and chemically intact it is made up of two more chemical components that is cellulose and also pectin. That presence of sporopollenin in case of the exine it will go into play a very significant uh, in case of the pollen grain because it can tolerate more temperature even acids and alkali substances. Due to this reason that the pollen grains are preserved as a process. And uh, look here, here in case of the pollen grain there will be a presence of the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm of the pollen grain it is protected by means of the plasma membrane. And in case of the pollen grain that cytoplasm it is differentiated into two different cells. Then you can see that smaller cell that is known as the generator cell and the bigger one that is known as the vegetative cell. In case of the generative cell, then there will be a presence of the nucleus, it is more or less spindle in shape and more reserve of materials are present in case of the vegetative cell and inside the vegetative cell, there will be a presence of the presence of the nucleus and that nucleus is considered as the vegetative cell nucleus or vegetative tube nucleus and this vegetative cell nucleus or vegetative tube nucleus it is helps in the formation of the pollen tube during the time of the germination. I mean to say the formation of the pollen tube, the germination of the pollen tube in case of the pollen grain during the time of the germination it is by the influence of the nucleus that is known as the vegetative cell nucleus. Yes, sir. Then look here and another thing I would like to say here in case of the XI, that XI it is not a continuous layer. XI is not a continuous layer and that XI it will go into leave some apertures. There will be apertures will be there and that apertures present on the XI is considered as the germ pore where that the sporopollenin is absent. Please you keep in mind that the sporopollenin it is absent in case of the area and that non-sporopollenin area is considered as the germ pore through that germ pore only there will be a formation of the pollen tube it is occurred. As I told you people already that exine it is very odd because of the presence of sporopollenin only. If that the sporopollenin it is present throughout the length of the exine that sporopollenin it is not permit the formation of the pollen tube during the time of the pollen germination. That is why it will go into use some apertures in different areas of the exit and it is known as the germ pore and through that germ pore only there will be a formation of the development of the pollen tube which is under. Then two things you have to keep in mind. In case of the germ pore region only there will be a development of the pollen tube which is under and the influence of the nucleus that is known as the vegetative tube nucleus. And look at that, 
now you can see that uh, pollen drain. That pollen drain then it is in two stage. I mean two separate stage. Then there are two different cells are there. That uh, larger one is known as the vegetative cell, and the smaller one is known as the generative cell. In more than 60 percent of angels per family, the shedding down. And as I told you people earlier, that as the maturation of the anther it is uh, occurs, then dissolution. Dissociation of the pollen tetrad and it will go into release as the pollen grain. Then releasing of the pollen grains from the anther it is taking place when that the pollen grain it is in the stage of two cells. Pollen grains when the pollen grains are in the stage of two cells, then it is split opening of the anther and also releasing of the pollen grains it is taking place and this type of releasing of the pollen grains it is noticed in. More than 60% of the angiosperm families, and rest of the rest of the families, I mean, remaining 35 to 40% of the family, that the shedding down of the pollen grains, it is taking place at the stage of three cells. Then what is that three cells? Very simple. As I told you before already, then there will be a presence of the smaller cell that is known as the generative cell. Inside the generative cell, there will be a presence of the generative cell nucleus, and that generative cell nucleus it is undergoing normal mitotic cell division. As a result of mitotic cell division, occurs in case of the nucleus of the generative cell, here there are two more nuclei are formed, and these two nuclei are considered as the male gametes. When There will be a presence of the two male gametes in case of the generative cell. Association with that vegetative tube nucleus. There are three different cells are there, and at this stage we can call it as the three-celled pollen grains. I mean to say, in some angels from family, the shedding down of the pollen grains, which is taking place when the pollen grains are in the stage of the cells. This is the idea about the structure and also different components which are formed during the time of the pollen generation. Then let us understand that in a few things about I mean uh, some more ideas about the uh, pollen grains. I mean to say that uh, the inhalation of the some pollen grains it will going to cause us some allergies. I mean to say that the chronic respiratory disorders like asthma, bronchitis, etc. In case of human beings, it is due to the inhalation of the pollen grains from uh, some species of plants. And you people, you know that that the parthenium, you can simply call it as the carrot grass. Actually, it is imported to India along with the contaminated wheat. And the inhalation of the pollen grains of that carrot grass or parthenium it causes the pollen allergy. And uh, some species, I mean pollen grains present in case of some species, then there will be a rich in nutrients. Then such a pollen grains are uh, supplies as a pollen tablet for the food supplement. And consumption of some pollen grains it will going to increase the the performance of the athletes and also resources. That is why that the bee pollen the product it is available and actually it is prepared from the England. And apart from that, let us understand the viability in case of the pollen grain. I mean to say viability is nothing but it is the living activity. I mean that the uh, lifespan of the pollen grain. I mean that the pollen grain it should be transferred to the surface of the stigma before its uh, viable time. The viability of the pollen grain it is varies from species to species. For example, in some families like I mean in some cereals like wheat and also rice, that viable time of the pollen grain it is about only 30 minutes. Whereas in case of some members of the families that is known as the rosaceae, leguminaceae, and also sorghumaceae, the viability of the pollen grain it is about few months. Then, in case of a less viable pollen, then we can preserve that less viable viable pollen as a uh, cryo preservation. You people, you know that you people, you heard that uh, during the time of the artificial insemination, we will going to preserve the semen artificially. And uh, sometimes in case of seed banks also they used to preserve that uh, raise uh, uh, seeds uh, species of uh, seeds of certain species. And uh, likewise, we can able to maintain the viability of the uh, pollen during the process that is known as the cryo preservation. During the time of the cryo preservation, uh, the pollens are preserved in case of the liquid nitrogen uh, in the, the temperature of minus 190 degrees Celsius. I mean to say, then we used to preserve any component. To maintain the viability, in case of the liquid nitrogen, about uh, minus 196 degrees Celsius is known as the cryo preservation. By doing so, by doing cryo preservation, then we can uh, maintain, we can preserve the less viable pollen for the long time. 